Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I'm your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and on this show we're going to be talking about the importance of commit messages. So sit back and let the knowledge flow in, because SE Geek begins now. Welcome back. In this uh, video, actually, what we want to do is we're going to go into that Grails repository again. Um, CD Grails. And we're going to, whoops, let's see, it was Grails Core. Okay. And we're going to be talking about uh, spending a whole video just talking about commit messages. These are actually very important. So let's bring up Get K. And we want to look at commit messages. Now, some people are better at these than others, and you know this is not a repository I have any control over, so I'm sure there are some bad commit messages in here that I can just pick on. Uh, like this one, fix failing tests. Not the greatest message in the world. Um, you could be explaining why. Like, you know, obviously, you know this uh, you're not doing much here in, in here so get, f fix failing tests may be okay but you you might want to say a little more than that um so well let's look at a, a different one this one's been this one was done by Jeff Brown so th this commit message um i'd say this is an actually better commit message this is uh, something, you know, you're saying Rails, blah, 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 which uh, this I know is, you know, a t particularly used for uh, bug systems, which they'll have like a tag. So basically he's saying, you know, in here that he's fixing a particular bug, which is Grails 8752. Uh, and this is probably the mis message that's, you know, attached to that. And he's saying uh, querying associates and criteria using technique like this was broken in associate embedding. And then he gives a little, you know, explanation. You and I have no idea what this really means. But to someone who's working on this project, this would be a lot, you know, this is, you know, more meaningful. It's definitely a whole lot more meaningful than fixed failing text. Uh, so... You know that that's the one thing I I want to stress in here is that you know good commit messages are important. Now this one is upgrade to Groovy 1.8.6. Okay, he, all they did was they changed a version in a couple places, so that you know suffices. You, know, you want to be somewhat concise, uh, but you know you want to be somewhat. You, you should be descriptive of what you're doing, what your intentions are. Because when someone comes in and looks at history, the first thing they see, like in this particular window, which I didn't go over before, but all you see is the first line of the commit message in this particular view. And, you know, basically you want something short and concise that, you know, kind of kind of like a, a subject of an email, something that, you know, is meaningful, but, you know, short and concise. So, you know, this, I would say, this particular message seems a little bit long for, you know, the first line. But, you know, maybe not so much. Um, test for grills, blah, blah, blah. So, this is just someone adding a test. Okay. But in any case, you know, when you look at these messages, like, these are v actually very concise. Um which, you know, depending on, I think Jeff Brown seems to add more. I, I, I kind of like his uh, commits better, uh, or commit messages better just by looking at them. But, okay, like this. He has, like, you know, the first line, which is kind of like the title. Uh, you know, it might be better, like one, you know, criticism I could make of this is, like, you might say, you know, fixing bug, Grails, whatever. Now, what would be a bad commit message is if it said just fixing bug and that was it. So here he's saying, you know, Grails, this is, you know, his change. And now he's, you know, giving a little bit more uh, information right here. 
Now, the other thing is uh, get commit messages do not wrap, unfortunately. So, you know, in, in your git commit message window, I would say if you're going for, you know, a longer commit message like this, you probably want to insert some of your own break lines just so it's easier to read. Uh, that's just one of the drawbacks of these particular messages. But uh, as you can see, he had one concise subject line and a you know much longer explanation of what's going on here. And that is actually a, what I would say a good commit message should be. Um, now, the other thing that I've seen uh, in particular, all right, here you can see that he's made a couple commits related to this. So it's, but, you know, each one of these is different. It's like, no such method. It's related to this, you know, particular bug. And then there's this one. I've seen people actually use the same commit message for different commits. So it'll be like fixing bug this, uh, fixing bug this. And it's like they made different changes in each of those commits, but they have the same commit message. So it's like, well, you didn't really fix it. You know, you, if you had actually explained what you did in that commit message, that would have been better. And I'm not saying you should go into, you know, long drawn out detail of what you're doing, but you should have, you know, an explanation of what your intention is with a particular commit. Now, the other thing that, you know, I like to do in particular, uh, you know, in commits, and this is in get style is, and, and you actually see it with, uh, you know, the, these people's uh, commits is they're very short and concise. And I showed you how to actually commit just particular lines. So, you know, this is kind of what's called micro committing. So you get a very rich history because if you do like big commits that have lots of changes in them, then you when you revert, if you rev have to revert them, you have to revert the whole commit and if there are disparate changes, like, you know, you're changing two different files for two different reasons, you know, then you have to, you know, figure out, all right, if I revert this, what are the consequences of me reverting this? Now I have to go back and I have to put part of it back in and not the other part. And, you know, it's, it gets to be kind of a nightmare if you have big commits that have, you know, that are changing two different things at the same time. Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't have, uh, like, here. Here's a good example. He changed different files, but these are all related to the same thing. And, you know, these, you know, it, it's, you know, it, it's it's something that's, a, you know, I would say a little bit of an art to figure out, like, what your commits should consist of. But they should consist of things that go together. Now, all of these particular uh, files that he changed, you know, it's it's small commits, and but they're all logically grouped. You know, these are all things that are actually going together for this commit. Actually, I'm assuming that uh, just based on the look over, but that's how commits should be, is they should be logically grouped. Now, if you're changing, you know, uh, you know, two different things, like, you know, you're, you're implementing a feature and you're fixing a bug, Though that should be two different commits. Those shouldn't go out together. Um, if they go out together, if you want to revert it, you have to revert the feature and the bug at the same time, which is, you know, a problem. So, you know, be conscious of what you're committing, how you're committing it, and, you know, your commit message. So, actually, this is what I was talking about before. Uh, and I'm going to pick on th this particular guy. Uh Fixing failing tests, same, you know, uh, message, fixing failing tests. This is a bad commit message because it's not saying what's going on, why you, you know, how you fixed it. It's like a lot of times when I do this, I'll say fix failing tests because I, I think this is what I'm doing. And sometimes I'll be wrong. You know, I'll say I'm fixing a test because this, you know, this check is is always false and or something like that but it turns out there's one time where it's not false so you know next time in the next commit i'll say oh this test is not always false so i'll uh you know i'll say something of like adding an extra 
te- uh, you know, an extra check for when this is not false to fix this test. Something like that. I I know that's might be hard to follow, but you know, just t- the takeaway is don't have the same commit message for two different commits because you're doing two different things. And actually, if you look at these commits, he is doing two very different things in very different places uh, with t- different, uh, you know, different files even. So, you know, that that's just the takeaway from this. Like, do good commit message. Ah, clean up. Bert is is doing this he's doing cleanup which you know that's great i i like cleanup in code but having the same like i said before the same commit message and there he's cleaning up two different files and probably for two different reasons so and in this case that could have probably been one commit but oh well well it depends on what you're actually doing in the well He's cleaning up. It looks like this is logging, and this is cleaning up of a controller. So, you know, it would have probably been better to say cleaning up logging and cleaning up controller API. But anyways, you know, I just want to nail this home, write good commit messages. You know, first line, short, concise subject, followed by maybe a paragraph, you know, or just a sentence saying what your intention is, what you think you're doing when you're doing a commit. And that's pretty much all I have to say. I think I've repeated myself enough. <laughs>